Welcome back to this series of digital unboxings for the motion graphics particles examples from the Insidium X Particles content repository. And before I start today, I want to give a shout out to Jericho O'Neill. He is the creator of the Snapchat filter that I'm using right now. I've been using this filter because it's Halloween season and I just want to give him a shout out so you can check out his other work. You can obviously use these filters in the Snapchat application, but you can also download the Snap Camera application for Windows and use them on your webcam. There's also the Lens Studio application for you to create your own filters. Today I will be unboxing the Push Apart Texture project and this seems to be the last of the projects that actually have spheres in them. I just wanted to get those out of the way because I think that those were pretty much the easiest to make but I'm already excited to start with the fire simulations with the smoke simulations. So if you want to see me unbox those or you just want to see the final result just follow me on Instagram or you can follow me here on YouTube and see how I break them down and just trying to understand how these professionals are going about motion graphics with particles which is the subject that I'm still learning and even though I am paying for this plugin for Cinema 4D I am very grateful for the company Insidium to have these project examples for people like me and anybody that wants to learn more about X particles and how it works these projects are helping me a lot because my original plan was just to read the manual and just sort of figure out things myself and whenever I discovered the video manuals for X particles and cycles 4d I was even more grateful for this plugin because these manuals pretty much give you a video example of everything that is inside X particles any specific tool that you want to learn you just watch a short video and to me that is very helpful as I am a visual learner and these content repository examples just give me a perspective of how I can actually use those principles from the manuals, how I can create some state-of-the-art motion graphics and to my benefit I've been using whatever I learned from these examples and apply them to the work that I do for clients. Before I start allow me to remind you that if you want to see the final work just head straight to my Instagram and I'm going to be posting it over there. So as any other digital unboxing whenever you extract the files the first thing you see is a note by Insidium that just gives you more information about the compatibility of the Cinema 4D X particles and cycles that are required required for this project example. They also render a frame just to give you a reference of what your project is supposed to look like right out of the box and that is the first thing that we're going to be confirming. I think it will be more convenient if they include even a short animation they don't have to render the whole thing but just to give you an idea how those particles are going to be moving. But I'll just press play on the editor so we can have an idea. I will stop it right there and activate the real time preview. It's set to 4 samples but I will increase that to 30. Ok so I just finished rendering that image at 30 samples and as you can see at the bottom left corner it took about 4 minutes and 7 seconds to render this at 30 samples. This is only for one frame and I am running this on a 2080 Ti and a i9-900K. And I can already tell you that I am approving this project file to be legit as far as as working right outside of the box. One thing I am seeing with the render examples that they are including is that they seem to be overexposed and as you can see in the one that I just rendered that's not really the case. So there you go this is what you can achieve with this project file and at this point I am ready to start deconstructing the scene and just see how everything works. I'm going to play this animation once again just to give you a quick idea of what we are about to deconstruct. It doesn't seem like there's much going on we have some camera animation and those particles just being pushed apart and that is pretty much what's happening. I'm going to hide the lighting environment, open up the camera dolly and just deactivate the camera view just so we can get a wider perspective of what the simulation is about. I will hide the camera as well and the Insidium icon in the viewport. So we just have those parts. I will go back and play the simulation again. So far nothing is happening and about frame 50 is when those particles get pushed apart. They move and then they just stay still again. So my plan so far is 
to see if I can get a little bit more movement, a little bit more dynamics into this composition. And there's not much going on. We have an emitter, we have a plane, and we only have a XP push apart modifier. So that's probably why the simulation is so basic. I always like to start with the emitter, so let me check that out. It's set to object and it's using that plane as the object. Now it is emitting from the texture, and I am assuming that we will see that texture once I open up the plane material. For the emission, we have a shot emission with a duration of one frame and a shot count of 3000. Our particles have no speed, but they have a radius of 20 centimeters as well as a radiation of 20. This means that our particles will be anywhere from zero to 40 centimeters because our base is 20 and it can either be 20 less or 20 more. Now on the display tag of our particles, we can see that it is set to circles. The color mode is set to gradient on the parameter of radius of the particles. So particles from zero to 40 will change from blue to green to this salmon color. The minimum and maximum is set to zero and 30, which I'm gonna change that to 40. And the last thing from this emitter that I'm seeing that we have to analyze is the cycles for the instance, which is basically going to create a sphere instance for those particles. I think that the sphere segments parameter is what sets the mesh for those spheres. It's set to 74, kind of weird, so I just keep it on even numbers. I just like to have multiples of eight. Computers just work better that way. I'm gonna make the plane visible just so we can see it. And that's already given us the texture that is deriving the particle emission from. And now I understand that wherever the texture has darker areas, the particles are gonna be smaller and the brighter portions, the particles are going to be bigger. And I think this is because of the object is set to emit from the texture. I don't think it's related to the XP push apart. So I'm gonna check that next. So this push apart modifier is enabled, is set to independent distance mode is use particle radius. We have a strength of 20% and nine iterations. No groups affected, no mapping and no fall off. You can already see that the strength is animated and at around 40 frames, that's when we see the strength change and our particles just push apart from each other just like the modifier is supposed to be. I'm gonna go ahead and activate the X-ray and the basics tab of the plane just so we can see a bit more of how the particles are forming. And yes, in any of the darker portion, there is almost no particle spawning and in the brighter areas, that's where we have the most emission from. And as you can see, the particles are just spawning on top of each other. And when our push apart modifier comes in, it just separates them. And it's not letting them touch each other. I don't know why this animation example is so basic the first thing that comes to mind is i need to animate the texture and there might be a reason to it because it might not refresh those particles being pushed apart so let me try that i'm gonna go to the plane and just open up that material and this is a cinema 4d material i'll deactivate the reflectance because we're not even using that and what they have in this material it's just a noise texture cinema 4d native the mode is set to stole and as you can see the animation speed is set to zero so let me try something like 0.3 i'll set my loop period to three and i'll just change the seat let me just get something completely different i'm also going to increase my timeline to 300 frames and i'll press play just to see what it does and it doesn't seem like it's moving i'm gonna go to my material go to the viewport section and activate my animate preview i'm gonna try that again our noise is moving but those particles are not sticking to the texture so now i don't really get the point of using this kind of technique because if i was to use a texture to emit particles and in this case a noise i would like to have the option to animate those particles and just drive the movement of those particles based on the noise that's what i was saying there might be a reason that they didn't set this as the example but i'm gonna try and see if i can figure it out they don't make it really clear of how you're supposed to be using those product examples but that is okay that's when we come in and we just bring the creativity to the table Okay, so I cannot get it to work. I try a different noise texture and I try going into the emitter 
and just going through the tabs but it doesn't seem like it's going to work the way i want it again i don't know the reason of using a texture to emit from specifically they're using a noise which can be animated and i mean i just want to animate everything but i'm having an idea of instead of using a plate i'm going to use a sphere and maybe i can get a bit more of movement going on Okay, so now I change the object to a sphere and instead of moving the actual noise from the material tag, I wanted to try to move the object itself. So I got a vibrate tag on the sphere and it's only going to vibrate its rotation and a really small frequency. I also increased the strength of the push apart to about 50%. But if I press play, as you can see, those particles stay pretty much in that same position that they spawn. They do not want to follow that texture. And I guess the name is push apart texture, not stick to texture. But still, I just wanted to animate to the texture. <laughs> now, there is an option on the emitter to stick the particles to the source object. But what it, that is doing, it is sticking them to the texture, but it's not letting them push apart. It's just keeping them in there. It's just this very, very strong glue. But since it's sticking to the texture, maybe I can now make the texture move. Let me try that. Nope. It's just going to stick them to whichever first frame. Okay, so maybe you have to do with the emission mode. Since it's set to shot and only duration of one. What if I just make that? Uh, okay. Uh, maybe shot count of 10. Okay, it is sort of following them now. But they're not really pushing apart. Okay, so rate is just going to keep emitting but i want them to follow the texture just when i thought that i figured it out it just didn't work so hear me out instead of using the xp push apart i'm using the xp attractor and this attraction will be based on a vertex map utility that will use the texture from the material of the sphere there even is an animated texture box which i checked but they are not moving with the texture oh wait i have stick particle to surface they're moving um Moving towards the origin though. Why are they being attracted to the origin? If an X particle master is watching this or if you know how to solve this, please just let me know down in the comments. But this is my way of thinking. We are emitting particles from the texture. And instead of a push apart, I'm using an attractor and attracting those particles based on a vertex map that's created on the texture of the material. But now if I think about it, when I click on the vertex map tag, it's nowhere near that texture from the material. So I don't know if it's asking for an actual texture here on the texture tag, but I just put a material So I don't know if I need a texture, but even then the particles are being attracted towards the origin So maybe let me move this attractor over here. Nope, they're still moving towards the origin Now I'm checking the video manuals, but it seems that they're using uh, an older version of X particles I can tell because of the icons and also there is not an option for the attractors over here so i don't know what i'm supposed to be putting in there my last resource is to look at the manual itself it says that i can drag the objects that i want to use in this list if i leave it empty they're going to be attracted to the position of the modifier itself it does say that i can use a mograph cloner or a matrix object and the clones will be used to attract the particles so instead of using this vertex map let me try it with the cloner okay i think i got it working and i know that this is now how the project is supposed to be working but people unbox all kinds of things and they don't even look at the manuals so i'm just gonna go ahead and tell you what i did so for the attractor i am using a mograph cloner in the cloner i have a disc being cloned for about a hundred times and on the effector shader i use the same noise so i want to think that those particles are moving with the noise but there might just be moving because of anything else <laughs> so i'm just gonna stop right there and just go back to the original file so here we are back to the original file i i kind of like going off on that tangent because it's 
I'm sh actually I'm I'm just disappointed on this animation. Okay, it's cool that it's you know emitting from the texture itself. I don't know why I will use that. But maybe in the future, I don't know. I might need this whenever I have to emit from textures. And maybe this is why they added uh, the animation on the camera because there's not much going on. So. It's okay, Insidium. Thank you, anyways. Okay, so at this point, we're done with the animation, and I'm just going to move to making the materials. I'm still going to see if I can add a bit more movement and probably way more particles into this animation. And because we are using the particle information to drive the color of those particles, I will be using cycles for the because whenever it comes to rendering based on particle information, cycles for the particle node, it's going to be your best friend. And so far, I don't know how to use use that in Octane Render. I don't know if they have a way to connect that particle info node or at least know the information of those particles such as the radius which is what's changing the color of these particles. So for now I'm just going to stick with Cycles 4D, play with composition and just come up with something more unique. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this color scheme how it is and I blame myself just for having high expectations on this project man as you can tell I get excited pretty easily and just as well I got disappointed that I couldn't animate based on the noise on the animated noise and I'm sure there's a way to do it and I'm sure that this is not the file to do it on but now I will never forget that I can actually spawn particles on textures even if I can move them. But anyways, these are the materials that I'm going to use for the render. I was having some trouble picking the focus. Cinema 4D was just crashing a lot on me. And I just don't want to try anymore for this project. I'm done. But I will be rendering this on a square resolution to post on social media. So that was the unboxing for the push apart texture. If you stay with me until this point, you can tell that there are a lot of ways that you can use particles and particles emitters. And you can just go on a tangent. You can just get in the rabbit hole pretty 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 quick and once again check out my instagram for my particle simulation animations and if you're interested and you speak spanish check out my new series el camino a uh, beeply which is basically a series dedicated to my winkle man beeply the man that cinema 4d knows all about everyone in the cinema 4d community knows about this man i'm pretty sure anybody in any other 3d software knows about this man and i created that series dedicated to him because he's the reason that pretty much i got into cinema 4d and just most graphics in general and what that new series is about is just me going to be please project files and pretty much doing the same thing just unboxing them and just learning from his motion graphics templates that he just puts online for the community to just explore and i will be posting those on a separate instagram account to so make sure to check that any questions or suggestions just let me know down in the comments and if you like this video make sure to check out my channel and stay updated see you